Welcome to the Alexander City Chamber of Commerce State of the Lake event. My name is Ed Kalari. I'm President and CEO of the Alexander City Chamber of Commerce. A little unique this year, instead of an in-person formal event, we decided to do a video series featuring a few topics regarding Lake Martin. First up will be a visit with Steve Arnberg, Vice President of Real Estate for Russell Lands on Lake Martin to talk about the real estate market on the lake. We'll also visit with John Thompson, who is the Executive Director of the Lake Martin Resource Association, LMRA, and all the great work they do here on the lake. And then we'll also visit with Alan Cutts and Dave Commander to talk about boat sales on Lake Martin. Would like to thank our presenting sponsor, Russell Lands on Lake Martin, as well as our gold sponsors, the Lake Martin Area Association of Realtors, as well as Larry Speaks and Associates. We also have our silver sponsors to recognize. That is the Lake Martin Resource Association, the LMRA, as well as our good friends over at Onsite Boat Care. And of course, Steve Robinson, County Commissioner in District 2. We'd also like to recognize and thank for their support, Towboat US on Lake Martin, as well as Valley Bank. Thank you for joining us. Hope you find this information informative and appreciate you taking part in the State of the Lake brought to you by the Alexander City Chamber of Commerce. Welcome into the Alexander City Chamber of Commerce State of the Lake video series. I'm Ed Kalari, and today we're going to be talking about the real estate market on Lake Martin. Honored to be joined by Vice President of Real Estate for Russell Lands on Lake Martin, Mr. Steve Armberg. Steve, how are you doing today? Yeah, doing great. Good, good to see you good, today. Good to see you as well. And we appreciate your time. If you would, I guess first question, just give us kind of a, an overall synopsis of maybe the last six months or 12 months as far as real estate uh, has been on Lake Martin. We expected 2019 to be a good year and we were not disappointed. In fact, it has proven to be better than we expected it to be, far outperforming our expectations and really a huge change in the dynamic of the market and the way people use the lake and use their real estate in the market. Many things have changed very much for the better. Okay. When you're evaluating real estate on the lake overall, what are some of the indicators or you know, what are some of the things that y'all are looking at to try to determine good, bad? We look at top line numbers. We look at the overall sales volume for property that sells on the lake. We look at the number of properties that sell on the lake. For me, a couple of things that are really important is the list price to sales price ratio. Okay. And also I like to look at the month supply of inventory that's on the lake. So for instance, I find the list price to sales price ratio is very important. If it's around 95%, that tells me that, let's say you have a $100,000 list price on a piece of property, that tells me that it's going to sell for $95,000. So a 95% sales price list price ratio tells me you have a stable market. Okay. As it approaches a 96% sales price to list price, that tells me that sellers are seeing property sell uh, very quickly and they're getting pretty much what they want for the property. And we're, that's what we're seeing right now is that sales price to list price ratio approaching 96%. Okay. Very healthy market for Very owners of property. Great to hear. As someone who lives and breathes real estate, especially mm -hmm. on Lake Martin, uh, got to ask you, what are your thoughts as far as the impacts of COVID-19, the pandemic, and maybe how that's played a role in real estate sales here? We thought back in March when COVID first came along that many of the pending transactions we had, that a lot of people would try and pause those or maybe even cancel those. Uh, but what really happened is people really began to look at the lake a little bit differently. They saw that lake property was a safer place to social distance. Lots tended to be a good bit larger than what you would have in a city home. You had uh, outdoor living space. In most lake homes, you had a pier that allowed you to converse with your neighbor at a distance. Boating from your lake place was much safer. And this past spring was a beautiful spring. The lake filled a little bit earlier very temperate weather. So summer actually got started early. So March this year was very much like March last year, which is a great March. April was very much the same, but in May we saw the numbers really begin to tick up to the point where the average sales price increased 15% year over year wow. and the volume increased over 40%. So rather than staying stable, it actually shot way up. So COVID had a positive effect for the Lake Martin region. Okay. How about when we talk about overall inventory of available lots or houses on the lake, how does that compare now to maybe numbers you've seen historically? Low, it's at the all time low in fact. So uh, I talked about the month supply. 
we look at things uh, if we didn't list any other property or if no one else wanted to bring their property to the market, how long would it take for us to exhaust available supply? We're looking at about a two and a half month period of time that it would take to exhaust that supply. Wow. We would hope on the lake in a normal market, that number would be somewhere, somewhere around a nine month supply. So when we see that low supply like that, that means that there's not enough inventory. The good news for property owners, that means their prices are actually gonna go up. Uh, bad news for buyers, it's gonna make the cost of buying property go up a little bit more. Gotcha. But with interest rates around 3%, that's created some more buying power for people. So the higher prices, we've been able to absorb those in lower interest rates. Final question, taking out your crystal ball mm -hmm. and looking ahead for maybe the next 12 months, next 24 months, kind of what are your thoughts? What direction do you see us headed with the real estate market on Lake Martin? It's gonna be challenging just because of the inventory. And what I mean by challenging is for people that want to come to Lake Martin and find a place, they're gonna find fewer properties to look at. For people that own property on the lake, that means if they need to sell their property, there's a, a greater likelihood that they'll be able to sell their property and they'll get a better price for their property than they would have a year ago. If we were to take a look at a recession now versus the recession that we had back in 2008, the difference being is in 2008, we had an almost eight year supply of developed lots. Wow. Right now we have well below a six month supply. So there's not this tremendous amount of inventory, the only way to sell through it, which is to reduce prices that we saw back in 2008. So from a valuation standpoint for people that own property, I see a very firm platform underneath their property values. The good news for them is it's going to stay that way, I think, for the time being. Uh, the bad news for buyers, it's gonna be a little bit more of a challenging. We've seen some uh, bidding type situations where people are having to compete for property. It's also creating a great environment for developers like Russell Lands, like the guys that are doing Miners Cove, uh, the power company with, uh, with Kennebec. It's gonna help them a lot because if you can't find a house that's ready to go, then you're gonna buy a lot and then you're gonna hire a builder to build a house. And that also bodes well for the Lake Martin region because that's employment opportunities. Excellent information, Steve. Now I know you took some time to prepare a deck for us with a lot of interesting insights into the real estate market on Lake Martin, if you would. Uh, walk us through that and, and share some of that information with us. So the first thing I have for you to take a look at is Lake Martin. What's important on this slide, the reason I put it in here, is for you to see the importance of Alexander City, which is on the north end of the lake. For much of the traffic that comes to the lake from Birmingham and that part of the state, which is the largest percentage, they have to come right through Alexander City, which makes Alexander City literally the gateway to Lake Martin. The other things that I show on the map are the property ownership in the darker green that is Russell Land's property. So that's a significant amount of property. And also there's a significant amount of that property that is currently undeveloped. So there is potential for a great deal of growth. So you really cannot have Lake Martin without Alexander City or the other way around. So just fast facts about Lake Martin. There's 880 miles of developed shoreline or filled shoreline of the lake. To give you an idea how big that is, 880 miles is longer than the coast of California. So fairly substantial body of water. When it was first built, it was the largest man-made lake in the world. 41,000 acres of water, and it's the only waterway in the state of Alabama that's been designated as a treasured Alabama waterway. The lake touches three Alabama counties. That's important because of the financial impact that it has on the counties through property tax income. We estimate that there are 6,450 individual property owners outside of Alabama Power, Russell Lands, and other big developers. That includes condominiums. So there are a significant number of people that own property on the lake. That's a very big stakeholder group. Of that property, if you were to spread that out amongst the 880 miles of shoreline, there's only 7.3 property owners per mile of shoreline. So that gives you the idea that Lake Martin is not very developed, especially compared to other lakes in the Southeast. So there's a tremendous amount of potential for additional growth on the lake if the market continues to improve. If we were to take 
the overall number of properties on the lake, the 6,450, and multiply that by the average sales price on the lake right now, there's a $4.2 billion property valuation on the lake. Now that's for residential only. That doesn't include golf courses, marinas, restaurants, any of those sort of things, just in residential property values. So that's a pretty safe number, which means that you're gonna have well in excess of $12 million in property taxes annually that are generated by Lake Martin property. We estimate that there are 350 miles of the 880 miles of shoreline that are undeveloped right now. The big developments on the lake, or at least as far as Russell Lands is concerned on active development, the largest is the ridge on Lake Martin. That will finish out with roughly 880 total properties that will be developed in all of the various phases and property types. So very significant development, especially when you consider the largest lakefront marina in the country is located in the ridge at the, with the ridge marina. One of the significant property types in the ridge has proven to be very popular even through the recession periods have been the Russell cabins that we build for sale. And these have become very elegant and very highly sought after. Country Living Magazine picked the Russell cabins in the ridge to be the location for their country living lake home of the year just a few years ago. So this is something that we're very proud of. Another new addition in the ridge is South Ridge Harbor. And this is a view out to the west towards Kalaja Bridge from one of the properties that have been built out there. So we've had a number of people that have been building houses out there. Bubba from Rick and Bubba fame, as well as Coach Pearl and Coach Malzahn. This is where their lake homes are located. The Willows is our newest development. This is part of the Willow Point community. The picture you see here is Pitchford Hollow Slough. The Willows is on the north side of that slough. Willow Glen, very successful on the south side. So that's the newest development that we've been working on. Now, as far as the market size for the lake, this is going to give you a little bit more detail on top of what I shared with Ed a moment ago. For the 12 months ending July 31, 2020, so this is a full annual look compared to the same period ending July 31 of 2019, the market did this, 268 million in total residential sales, which was an increase of gross dollar volume of 43.2% over the same period last year. The year of 2019, depending on your data, was either the second or third best year in the history of the lake. So if you're that much better than a really good year, we have a lot to be thankful for. The total number of residential transactions, so this would be single family detached townhomes and condominiums. There were 408 total residential transactions. That was an increase of 24%. So if you have fewer transactions and more overall volume, that tells you that average price would have increased, and it did. It went up to an average of $657,000. That was an increase of 15.1%, which is a tremendous return for any property owner, and something that we're very excited about uh, having transpired this year. We think that will continue to climb. The total waterfront lot sales uh, over that same 12-month period uh, increased 11.4% to 23,987,000. We think that will continue to accelerate uh, because of inventory levels. And that was a total of 77 waterfront lot transactions, which was an increase of 20.3%. Um, so if you combine all of that, the overall dollar volume of sales was 292 million, a total property sales an increase of 39.9%. That was 485 total property transactions, an increase of 23.7%. Very good year for real estate, and the market continues to grow and do perform very well. Now, on the lake, there are some notable developments. We did mention Russell Land's developments, the Ridge being the primary development. The Willows, as I told you, was our newest development. We first began that and launched that in 2018. In that time, we've developed 64 waterfront lots. 51 of those are already sold, so that's a very successful development. 
And phase four actually released this past July. We had 29 new lots that we released in July and 20 of those 29 are already sold. So we're very pleased with the reaction to that. And especially with the average sales price has been, been very impressive and we've been blessed there. White Oak Landing, they released that development uh, just a year and a half ago uh, with 24 lots and they're already planning to release phase two next spring, so that has been very successful for them. Kennebec, which is a power company development on the south side of the lake, has been very successful this year as well. Tallassee Cove, which is also on the south side of the lake, very similar to White Oak Landing, a Birmingham developer builder group. They've been very successful with that development, equal to uh, the White Oak Landing sort of success on the Montgomery side of the market. And then the recently approved Miners Cove, they released 16 lots recently with virtually all of those lots being under a reservation agreement. So that's something that's actually in the city limits of Alexander City like White Oak Landing, which are the two first developments in the city of Alexander City in well over 10 years. So that's excitable development activities on the lake. I focus on lot sales because that really is an important economic driver for our, our local economy. First of all, you've got the permit revenue from the building departments, whether it be Tallapoosa County or if it's in the city of Alexander City. Plus you have the increased property tax revenue that comes with the new homes. New homes tend to be more expensive than existing. If you have a house that is being built, you have over 40 different trades on each one of those jobs. That's the different work opportunities that are generated for our economy. You have over 30 different suppliers, so whether it be lumber or whether it be shingles or whether it be windows or cabinets, paint, 30 different suppliers have to supply materials on each job. With the construction, you're gonna have banking. With construction lending, you'll have insurance on all those different projects. Utilities will be added, impact fees for utility departments around the area. Road building will take place, architects get hired, engineers get hired, real estate agents get hired. So all of those different activities are added to the income revenue uh, as, as well as the trades on each job. Contractors that build these houses, they buy gas, they buy food, they buy tools in the area. Even if they come from outside of the area, they do all of those things. The people that buy these houses, they buy boats, they buy furniture, they buy skis, they buy food, they buy gas. They come right through Alexander City and they're, they become part of our community and hopefully they eventually retire here. So giving you an idea of the impact, if the average lake home uh, costs $650,000 and you've got 77 lots that have sold, that is an economic impact of $50 million. We estimate that of that $650,000, $325,000 of that is on materials. So if you look at it that way, over $2 million in sales taxes are generated by the construction activities. I have a couple of charts for you. The first one is your 12 months rolling sales. Each one of those squares, a one year's review of what the transactions look like. It kind of smooths things out. So if you go all the way out to the right, you can see that it, by the end of July 2020, we were at an all-time high dating all the way back to October of 2010 on the gross amount of property sales. So we are really in a very healthy standpoint right now. Ed, you asked me earlier about the COVID effect. This is showing you your monthly average transactions. And you can see in February, it was beginning to go up, but it went up like a, a rocket ship being launched from Cape Canaveral out through July. We have not seen any time in the history, dating back to October of 2010, sales jumped at that level. You can see the normal seasonality as you look back to the high points, but nothing like what we've seen through the COVID environment. People discovering what a great place Lake Martin is. And we're beginning to see a lot of people not come here just for the weekend, but moving here on a full-time basis. This is a graph that's just showing you the average sales price dating back to 2013. We're at the highest average sales price on the lake. So if any of our viewers and uh, people seeing this report 
own lake property, you should feel very good about your investment right now. This is a graph that's showing you what our inventory levels are like. So we're in an all-time low for inventory. It says over 100 units that are current active listings. But of that over 100 listings, when this chart was done, roughly 35 of those properties were under contract that were in some sort of contingency waiting for home inspections, septic inspections, or financial approval. So at the time this chart was made, there were really only 80 properties available. And if you're selling over 400 of those, you can see that you wipe out that inventory. That means we as developers on the lake, uh, Russell Lands and other developers, can proceed with confidence of introducing new development activity over the next couple of years, which will again give more people opportunities to buy lots, build houses, which is a huge economic driver. So the overall state of the real estate market on the lake is very robust for Russell Lands as well as everybody else in the real estate industry on Lake Martin. Thanks, Steve. That's great. A bunch of very positive and insightful information on the real estate market on Lake Martin. Really appreciate your time. Once again, that was Steve Arnberg, Vice President of Real Estate with Russell Lands on Lake Martin. We appreciate him joining us on the State of the Lake video series focused on real estate today. We would like to thank our sponsors for making this video series possible. The State of the Lake, presented by Russell Lands on Lake Martin, would like to recognize our gold sponsors, the Lake Martin Area Association of Realtors, as well as Larry Speaks and Associates. Of course, this couldn't happen without our silver sponsors as well, the Lake Martin Resource Association, our good friends at Onsite Bocare, as well as County Commissioner Steve Robinson in District 2, and of course, some additional support and thanks goes out to our friends at Valley Bank, as well as Tobo U.S. Lake Martin. Please stay tuned for more from our State of the Lake video series when we meet with John Thompson, President of the Lake Martin Resource Association. Once again, this is the State of the Lake video series brought to you by the Alexander City Chamber of Commerce.